to kvinner, og ingen av dem var dealere. Og nå er vi midt inne i hånda her også. Og dette her blir veldig spennende, altså. Hva, hva er tankene om, uh, om testosteronnivået i lokalet? Det er ikke så mye til det teatret du bor i her, synes jeg. Nei, det er ikke så mye testosteron på dette bordet, nei. Jeg ser det der, og det er et godt voksen bord, kan du si. Hva, hvordan er det å være på tur? Veldig gøy. Burde det vært flere damer her? Ja. Så hva skal vi si til de damene som sitter hjemme og ser på nå? De rekker jo hit før 12 i morgen, gjør de ikke det? Jo, det kan jo hende. Kan hende? <laughs> hva, er, hva er målsetningen for dagen i dag, sånn rent bokemessig? Vi videre til dag 2, og så gjør vi dag 2 veldig bra. <laughs> det er en veldig bra plan. Ja, ja. Og med deg? Ja, så håper vi å komme videre til dag 2. Ja. Dag 2, og så tar vi det derfra. Ja. Dag 2, og så tar vi det derfra. <laughs> Tevor Magnus, hvordan påvirker det spillet? Jeg kommer til å spille... Prøv ikke dritt med det. <laughs> Lykke til. Ja, takk. Hello YouTube and good afternoon. This yep. is Jason Glatzer here live at the Norwegian okay. Championship at Kart Casino Bratislava. Ready uh, in the main event here and we are entering level five on day 1B. Day 1B alone and this is a freeze out event. Already attracted 700 entries approximately. You can see that there's 642. Uh, it's gonna keep growing and growing and growing. Late registration is not only open throughout today, but players that didn't already enter can enter tomorrow before the cards are in the air to start tomorrow's day two. And we have quite the treat for you. You can take a look at this feature table. Lots of formidable poker players, but why this is a massive treat is that we have chess grandmaster, Magnus Carlsen in action. He's wearing that white hoodie there with the Unibet patch. No. Looking forward to see how he plays poker, if it is as good as his chess. And already we're into the action, we're at lines 500-1000, Bill Stead opening up from under the gun with a suited Queen Jack, and is called by, uh, by uh, Volt, and let's see what Magnus Carlsen will do. Is he going to get involved right away in the first hand at the feature table? He indeed will be calling with his jack-10 off from the cutoff. But Tom Jacobson, he may be jacking it up from the button in position with his big slick. Players start off with 100,000 chips, so Jacobson is a little bit down. You can see Carlson is a little bit up. Bolt has double the starting stack. And Carlson uh, will have a decision to make when it comes back around to him, but for now, Jacobson does three bet it to 6800 and Christian Onsen is next to act in the big blind. He would have flatted a single bet but facing a three bet with three other players has a decision to make but does opt the cold call from the big blind which will probably lead other players to follow suit. This pot is getting big fast. The first pot at the feature table. Of course, these players were playing together at the outer table. There's probably already some player dynamics going on. Billstad does call, and I expect Gold to do the same after calling the initial bet, and he does. Carlson checking his hand. <laughs> It is still Jack-10, it is still offsuit. Yes. <laughs> it's going five way to a club. With already 31,000 in the middle. 35,500 in the middle after crossing calls. <laughs> An all spade, queen of spades, ace of spades, seven of spades spot. 
This is a beautiful flop for Jacobson who did 3-bet. However, will he be able to get any action? Bold and Bilstad did flop middle pair. Carlson has a gutter to Broadway. And Carlson's hand is actually suited. I thought it was off-suit. Apologies for that. It checks around to Jacobson. And it looks like he is ready to fire out a continuation bet. For 13,000, about one third of the pot. And gets everybody to fold. So picks up a nice pot despite getting no love on his flop bet. see players having fun on day 1B. Before the stream began, I roamed around the room and the buzz was fantastic. You can feel the fun in the air. And it's very rare for a main event at any festival to be a pure freeze out. And it's great that the Norwegian Championship has kept up that tradition. This is poker at its purest. And we have Barre here. We got to talk to him the other night, a very nice guy who I've seen before in Estonia, where I am very often working. He does raise it up to 2300 with his ace eight suited. And once again, expect Carlson to get involved. If he got involved with the Jack-10 suited from the cutoff, he's more than likely to get involved with the Ace-10 suited from the hijack. He's probably thinking about whether to three bet or call. And he does fire out a three bet to 6,500. It folds all the way back around to Barre. He will be playing the sand out of position if he wants to put more chips into the pot. Of course, he could four bet and make things even more interesting. It does indeed call both places, both players with the suited ace here. Six flop. <laughs> Players are laughing. You could see it'll be a split nearly half the time if it goes all the way to showdown. A very satanic looking flop. And after Barre checks, Carlson continues for 2,500, a quite small bet, into a pot of 15,500. Barre going nowhere. Does just call. Two of hearts does not connect with either player. And Barre checks again. Let's see if Carlson keeps his foot on the pedal. Checks it back. And the five of diamonds on the turn now. If it goes check, check for a, another round, Carlson will win, being that both those cards were beneath a 10, so his 10 kicker will come into play with that ace. But let's see if Bari can put some pressure on the poker chess master, grandmaster. Bari does check. 
weakness, has some showdown value, and checks it back. And Carlson takes down the pot, is up to 136,000 in chips. Meanwhile, Barre has some work cut out for him. He's down to 60,000, but that's still 60 big blinds. Blind levels are one hour each, so there is plenty of play in the main event. So the feature table is on the top floor of the four floors of action at Card Casino, Bratislava. There are dozens upon dozens of tables also in play on the main floor and lots of cash games as well on a different floor. So all this, although this event is only open to Norwegians, we recommend that you come down to Card Casino if you want to play some of the open events. And it's going to be hard to find better cash games at all different stakes than you will this week. This time it's Tom Jacobson opening up with the suited Jack 8 from the hijack. Said, looks like he is counting out his chips for a call. No, it is a three bet to 9,000 from out of position with his fours. And Jacobson gives up on the hand. Barre with the gorgeous big slick from under the gun. Opening to 2200. So far, nobody waking up with a hand <coughs> they wish to play back against Barre with. Christian Onsen calls from the cutoff with ace deuce off. Spite calls as well with queen jack off from the small bind out of position. <coughs> And it's fight, flopping top pair on the Jake Diamonds, 10 of spades, 7 of spades flop. Ari with the gut shot to Broadway. All Christian has is a runner, runner, flush draw. Let's see if Ari continues after being the pre-flop aggressor. It checks around to Christian who is reaching for some chips. You could see his equity is the lowest, so he's trying to steal this one away. I don't think it will work this time. 
Spite does indeed call with this top pair. And let's see what Barre opts to do here. Barre not valuing his two over cards and his gut shot Broadway draw. And now Christian has oh. increased with some equity here with that ace of spades in there, but it's fight jamming for 24,100 into a pot of slightly less. Christian is asking for a count. We could see he's not getting proper pot odds to call with one card to come. But Christian may feel otherwise. He does have some chips to spare if he wants to take a risk. He should put Spite on a strong hand, perhaps not the eight. If he doesn't put him on an eight, then he would know his ace might be live. Regardless of what he puts his opponent on, he would have that flush draw with one card to come. And Christian agrees and folds, and uh, Spite picks up a much needed pot <laughs> and up to 43,000 in chips. Rotan raising it up to 2,500 for middle position with King-9 suited. It does seem like to be a fairly active table here. Typically the Norwegians do come out to play, do like to play aggressive poker. Can't be difficult to play against. Christian calling from the high jack with Queen Jack. Oscar Bilstad doing the same from the cutoff with pocket fives. Perhaps Spite would come along if he had more chips, but ups to fold, as do the players and the blinds. So we're going to go three way to a flop. Nine queen flop with two spades. <coughs> Hits Christian with top pair. Rotan was the original aggressor. Improved to middle pair, but does check. But Christian reaching for chips there. Bets 30% of the pot with a bet of 3,000. Billstead snap folds his fives. And Grotan has a decision to make. He has lost a bit of his stack already, as we can see. And does call out of position with his middle pair. of diamonds on the turn does not connect with either player. Christian's equity to win this hand has increased significantly. And Grotan checks again. Christian immediately reaching for chips. Eight. Eight 
with a bet of 8,000, and this will likely get Grotan out of the way. If he knew Grotan had King-9, though, he would like to see his opponent call. No immediate decision by Grotan. I think he's trying to put the whole story together. It's good when players take their time rather than rush their decisions in by poker. So make you a little bit nervous being at the feature table. The lights are a little brighter. You can see the cameras running. But does make the correct decision with the fold. He was far behind in the hand. Of course, he could have gone a king or a nine to get there. Here's a look at the chip counts. Hans Christian does have about double, a little more than double starting back. Meanwhile, Ivan Void also has nearly 200,000 in chips, and there's a few short stacks on the table, including Barre, Oystein, and Tor Hakan. Jacobson folding his king 10 from under the gun. A couple of quick folds, and now it's Oscar Bilstad also folding his rags. So far, nobody's showing up with a hand. That is until Bold winds up with an ace on the button and raising it up to 2200, which seems to be now the, uh, the standard sizing. Let's see if Magnus will defend here with his 8-6. He hasn't immediately tossed it away. <coughs> but does indeed fold probably happy enough to uh, to get two folds there from the players in the blinds. Ah, it's an old friend dealing this feature table Doris. I haven't seen Doris in about four years, but we got to have a quick chat this morning. Glad to see that she is doing well. It's one big family at the end of the day. We should take care of our dealers, take care of the floor. Without the dealers and for there would be no poker events around the world and we have many of the best from Europe at this event so spite opening it up from the hijack with the ace jack and finally we see a different sizing he opens up the 3000 After we saw some family pots earlier on, now in the last two hands it was just a raise and everybody folding. It's a little bit too early for those pre-flop pots to add up. But I'm sure the players with the short stacks don't mind adding a few chips to the pile. Can you put the look a lot of the Can you put the look a lot of the 
Sorry if I get on here. And it looks like we see our first swimp at the feature table of what's fight limping as king five suited from middle position. I expect Bari to be racing here with his ace jack. If you combine the two player stacks together, you have exactly a starting stack. And does indeed raise the 3800. <laughs> that will likely get Magnus Carlsen out of the way. Indeed it does. The players in the blinds not showing up with anything either. So let's see what Spite does here. Tight is right for Spite and does fold. Perhaps should have thought twice about limping. Preflop from early middle position. But it didn't cost him much. Oscar Bilstad with the fives here. Another formidable poker player here at the Norwegian Championship. Opens to 2300. Bare, who just picked up a few chips the previous hand, doesn't want to get involved with his ace eight offsuited. Who can blame him? But it looks like Magnus Carlsen came here to play, but not this time. Possibly good considering Jacobson has that ace 10, which dominates the queen 10 that Magnus had. But Jacobson may not want to get involved either. Typically, an under the gun open is a stronger open, and hands like ace 10 are typically dominated. But not this time. The players in the blinds are likely to fold. Let's see what Christian does. I don't think you need to defend your 5-3 off. But I stand corrected, Christian defending his 5-3 off. It's actually okay to do so. As long as you know how to play very well post flop to be defending these hands. It'll be trouble for him though if there's a 5 high flop, but that's very rare for that to happen. But even so, that's a hand he can get away from if there's too much action. But neither player really hitting a piece of this 9 of clubs, queen of clubs, 9 of hearts flop. Bilstad still ahead. And we can see Christian is drawing dead, but it checks all the <coughs> way through. The Eight of Diamonds isn't the worst card in the deck for at least Jacobson because now a 10 is still good. A Jack will give him a straight, and his Ace is live as well. But it's Christian leading out for 3,700, trying to steal this one away after it checked through on the flop. And he does get Bill Sad to fold. And Jacobson, well played, Christian. You saw he had 0% equity to win the hand against two other players. That did not matter with nobody directly hitting a piece of the board. Christian recognizing the situation, taking advantage of it. And that's an example of playing very well post flop and why you can defend with some of these hands. <laughs> However, if you're a little bit newer to poker, I recommend not playing those hands from the big bind because they can get you into trouble. A couple of early position folds, but Bari is not going to go anywhere with these tents, putting them in the box. Let's see what he raises it up to. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like we're back to the standard 2200 <laughs> racing size. <laughs> Carlson folds. Jacobson likely not going too far with his ace jack. Does call. And likely will be playing this hand to position depending on what happens the rest of the way. Christian also opting to call this time from the small blind with King 10 suited. 
and Bill said decides not to defend his 6-3, which is exactly what I would do in that spot as well. It makes a big difference whether that hand is suited or not in my opinion. The tens are still strong on this three of club, ace of spades, five of hearts flop. Christian with two over cards and a backdoor flush draw, and Jacobson just with the two over cards. So it's a good chance that Bari continues, which more often than not he will because he wants to have his opponents pay a price to see a turn in river, even if he feels he's ahead. And he bets 5,000 into a pot of 8,600. I don't foresee either player appealing but let's see how they decide to play it. Jacobson folds, and Hans Christian also quickly folds. So, Bari back up to 65,000, getting closer and closer to that 100,000 starting stack figure. But considering how deep the play is in general at the Norwegian Championship main event, players start with 100,000 in chips, Blinds go up every hour, and players can still enter before the start of tomorrow. There's really no rush. It, it's not the end of the world to be on 65,000 right now. That is 65 big blinds. <laughs> Looks like they lost Magnus Carlsen temporarily at the table. It's also not the end of the world to take a short break at this stage if you feel like you need one. Because you're not going to lose a high percentage of your stock. But Carlson just missed that one hand. He's back in his seat already. And it's Christian, the chip leader at the table, providing some action opening to 2,500. From the button with king three. And Spike defending with the ace two and flopping top two on the ace. Club two, a club four, club flop. Christian gonna bet his gut shot to the wheel, trying to maybe rep those clubs, rep those aces, but don't expect to see his fight going anywhere. He does just call a bet of 2,500. And that might slow his fight down. That is a scary turn card being in another club. Is Christian gonna try to rep the clubs and then that might actually work? but does check it back and the four parts on the river counterfeits fights two pair if he's thinking that his opponent had an ace and maybe not a club but is going to bet anyway he bet 5,000 out of a stack of 38,000 and Christian didn't snap fold here doesn't really have too much showdown value doesn't have any clubs in his hand, didn't connect otherwise, and did eventually fold. And Spite now up to 50,000 or half a starting stack. So the short stacks are picking up hands now. Gaining some momentum. looking to get involved with his King Jack and opens to 2200. Magnus Carlsen folds, Tom Jacobson also folds. And we did already see Christian fold this 6-2 off. Although we don't know what Oscar Bill said had, he did call from the button. And it looks like it's going to go heads up to a flop unless uh, one of the players in the blinds came along, but I don't believe they did. And I believe it was an ace king x flop and Bari flopping middle pair. We don't know what Bill said have we. Christian is not in the hand at the moment.
And it does not matter, nothing to see here. A continuation of that and a fold by Billstad and Barre getting closer and closer to starting stack. It is quite a grind, this event. So some early troubles that, you, that players may be experiencing. There's still plenty of time from them to recover. It doesn't always matter what you do in an opening day of a long event. It's more important what you do on day two, day three, and beyond. Of course, it makes it a little bit easier if you bag a big stack, but you don't necessarily need to. Folds around to Spite on the button, who has 49,000 before opening up rather large to 3,500. You've seen a variety of players with different styles. Interesting. Bolt getting frisky here. I mean, he does have double starting sack. He can afford to get frisky and be aggressive, but this is jack six off from the small bind, and I expect Spite to jam it here. Indeed, he does, and takes down the pockets up to 60,000 without having to see a flop turn or a river. Although, he would have probably preferred to double up. This is still a very good situation because his equity wasn't 100%. It was more like 60%, and here he took down all the chips early. A quick look at the chip counts once again. thinking about what to do with this 10-9 suited for middle position and does open it up to 2,500. Oscar Bilstead has that hand fairly dominated with the ace-10, but let's see if he plays along. Slightly above his starting stack with more than 100 big lines. He is reaching for chips. Is he reaching for a call or a three bet? He does indeed three bet the hijack, the 6,800. Spike gets out of the way, as does Bolt. Expect Bari to also muck his hand. But Magnus Carlsen waking up with the jacks here. We could have some fireworks go off. Although I expect if Carlsen floor bets, that will take care of the action. He may opt to cold call that three bet, but we know he is not likely to fold his jacks. There are a hundred ways to play jacks, and Magnus Carlsen probably knows all of them, but really the saying, there's a hundred ways to play jacks and none of them are good. But the poker grandmaster, Magnus Carlsen, four betting to 19,000, this will work. Christian is not snap folding his 10-9, but I think he'll come to that conclusion soon enough. He does indeed fold. And Billstead, if he wants to peel this large four bet, would be playing in a position. If he wanted to five bet, then we could see what Carlson will do, but I do expect him to fold. And Billstad indeed folds, and Carlson picks up a pot with his jacks. Please, if I might. I think that I'll do it. I think I'll make it. Magnus Carlson having some fun. <laughs> Although he's not playing poker that often, he is involved with the Norwegian poker community. Alla 
a couple of early position folds. And now it's fight's turn with the, for the fish hooks. And raising it up to 2700 from the hijacked. Let's see if anybody else wakes up with a hand. Bari may decide to do something with his fives. He's not at least immediately tossing them away. And does call from the button. And Magnus Carlsen with the King Queen. We did just see him fire out a large three bet before uh, with Jax from the blinds. Yep. Now he'd be facing off against Jax. And does indeed fold his king queen out of position. It comes as no surprise to me at least that Magnus Carlsen knows what he is doing thus far at the poker table with a flop top pair here. Meanwhile, Spike is ahead with his jacks and is ready to bet. And it's going to be hard for Bari to continue on this kind of flop. And if he does, he would be very far behind. And as I say that, he does find a call. And this make, make both players a little more confident that their hand was good. Carlson is probably not too happy now that he folded his king queen, seeing that he would have had trips. A fairly small bet here. This may string Bari along. Or Bari may even decide to uh, turn his hand into a bluff, which essentially it is at this point. He is pretty far behind. He needs a five on the river to pull ahead, in fact. But it's not a five. It's one card higher. It's a six of hearts completing the board on the river. Spite checking this time around. Bari checking back for a showdown value, only to get the bad news that... Uh, his pair was dominated all the way through. And Spite, who is below 40,000 in chips, now has 70,000. And for those of you just tuning in, this is Jason Glatzer coming to you live from the Norwegian Masters main event at Card Casino Bratislava. We are on day 1B. There are two opening fights. There's nearly 700 players already in day 1B. <laughs> It's a five day event with eventually a winner crown on day five on Sunday, April 2nd. Only Norwegians can play this event and there's nearly 2,000 Norwegians in town, many of which are now playing on day 1B. Uh, you're in this now, yeah, that Bari, who just lost some down, chips yeah. with fives, is thinking about what to do with his 9-6 suited from the cutoff. And opens it up to 2200. And now Magnus Carlsen has him dominated with the nines. Is he going to three bet? Is he going to call? We know he's not folding. Certainly not from the button. Ops to call. Let's see if any of the players in the blinds show up with any hands here. Jacobson did have an ace, but it was connected with a deuce and decided that wasn't good enough to play the hand out of position. A very good flop for Bari. Two clubs. He also has a gut shot to the straight. He may even think his over cards are alive. And you can see now the equities are close to 50-50. 
does check it over. I expect Carlson now to bet his over pair to the board. But then he may be facing a difficult decision. Abari comes over the top with a check raise or a check jam. He did bet. We will see how much fairly soon for 2,000, so less than one third of the pot. Ari is not going anywhere if you're gonna play 9-6 suited and get this kind of flop. And does check raise it from 2,000 to 8,000. Carlson thinks it over and makes the call. So we have 22,900 in the pot already. And the king of clubs comes on the turn. So Bari completes his flush. You can see his equity now is 100%. If it was a lower club, perhaps he would be able to get some sick value out of this. But maybe he can squeak out some value already considering the pot is bloated up to 22,900. And Bari bets 8,000 into a pot of nearly 23,000. The bet sizing may keep Carlson around. Carlson uh, may even try to turn his hand into a bluff and rep that he has the clubs. But recognizes that he's behind. Has a very good read there. Saves some chips while Bari uh, wins the pot and is up to 65,000. Once again, you can hear players having fun in between hands. You can hear some of the noise from the outer tables as well. It is a vibrant and active poker scene. I can't actually think of a more vibrant scene than here at the Norwegian Championship. And I typically cover recreational styled events. So typically they're all fun, but this one is definitely super special. And for the second time though, we see Spike win, but this time with a slightly better holding with King-10 offsuit. Bari happy to win behind with his ducks. And Jacobson waking up with an identical hand to Spite. By identical, I mean it's also King-10 offsuit. Lifting from the button, lifting behind from the button. Cool. Protan completing from the small bind and the table chip lead finds Christian Onsen. Tosses his big bind in, so we're going to go five way in a family style pot and a limp affair. <laughs> Six, eight, queen flop, so Austin flopping top two. Meanwhile, Grotan flopping top pair and a flush draw. This pot could get big. Grotan may find himself at risk at some point, not realizing how far behind he is. But after some bets, three players fold. Grotan can't be going anywhere. Hans Christian would be potentially betting without mm -hmm. having two pair. And does jam, and a snap call by Onsen. Grotan needs a bit of help right now. It's any club, there is some backdoors to a straight as well. 
running sevens would get him there on top of that. But it's a five of hearts on the turn, so now that open ender is there, and you can see Onsen's only a two to one favorite, and a three of diamonds on the river. Good game to Grotan, well played wow. there by both players. Nine. Unfortunate for Grotan, he was up against top two. And Hans Christian Onsen, who already had the biggest stack at the table, has grown his initial starting stack of 100,000 up all the way to 255,000, a little bit more than midway through day 1B. Thank you very much there, Doris, but we have a new dealer. Let's see if we recognize who this dealer is so we can give them a shout out on the stream as well. Once again, all the staff, whether it's the people cleaning up after the messy poker players, whether it's the owner of the casino, or anybody in between, such as myself, I also do work hard, such as the Norwegian commentators, they deserve a massive shout out in Stigmon and Shell. They've been working hard all week long. The entire crew at the Norwegian Championship and of course all the dealers and all the floor. And the players creating this vibrant vibe make our work seem easy. The days fly by fast. A lot of us do love our work anyway, but even more so when we see the appreciation by all the players that are here for everything that has been going on. Meanwhile, it's Magnus Carlsen to open up with his ace three offsuit for 2200, only for Tom Jacobson to wake up with the snowman from the button. Is he gonna call or three bet is the only question here. 65. And that question was answered with a three bet to 6500. Onsen, who just won a decent pot, has folded. But Billstad, he would have completed or maybe three bet from the big blind with his ace 10, which dominates Carlson's ace three. But now, since he's facing a three bet by Jacobson, puts him in a tricky spot. Many players would fold in this spot, but let's see what Oscar Billstad will do. There will be no folding, it seems, by Billstad. He is reaching for chips, perhaps for a four bet. And indeed, it is a four bet, showing a lot of heart. Four betting to 13,500, and that certainly will get Carlson out of the way, perhaps saving him some chips. And Jacobson calling in position with the snowman, and the two players are flipping. <coughs> we did some, see one of those aces come out of the deck already and into Carlson's hand. Mm -hmm. And already 30,000 in the pot. And Jacobson's eights are still ahead with three cards under that coming on the six of spades, seven of clubs, two of hearts flop. But it was Billstead who is the aggressor and his first to act. Let's see how he plays after four betting this pre flop. One of the players we've seen around before with a lot of poker intelligence. We'll be continuing for 2800, so quite a small continuation bet. Less than 10% of the pot. Jacobson raising it up and Billstad getting out of the way. Jacobson only had to raise it up to 7500 to win this uh, pretty decent pot. And is now above a starting stack once again. Yeah, hold on, <laughs> after taking down a hand against Oscar Billstead, who did show a lot of heart with that four bet.
looks like to 2200. The graphics will catch up momentarily. And he has a very strong hand with that ace queen. But Onsen with not such a strong hand with the 6-5 offsuit will be playing position and will be three betting this hand. We're seeing a lot of aggressive play by players early on. And Spite will have to now get rid of his ace nine, whereas before he would have likely have defended with it. And let's see what Bari opts to do here. Does opt to call and play this hand out of position and is pretty ahead. But if he doesn't flop an ace or queen, it's going to be hard for him to recognize his equity. But it's Onsen approving to middle pair. So now let's see if Bari can steal this away from Onsen out of position. But we'll be facing a bet of 5,000, one third of the pot. Does not have any diamonds in his hand. but does indeed check call. And now the jack of clubs on the turn, so it's a double suited board. Bari does have that gut shot to Broadway. His ace and queen are still live too, but he may not realize this. And Onsen really telling a story here. He bets out again, this time for 11,000. Repping more than just 6-5 here, obviously, but is ahead with the 6-5 after connecting on that flop with this 5. And Barre calling once again. With just 42,000 in a stack, he has less than a pot size bet behind. And the three of spades on the river does not help him. Does check. Let's see if Onsen is going to turn his hand into a bluff. We see that he's ahead. He's probably not going to get any more value. It does what? check it back and will show that he was three betting pre with 6-5. Betting that flop, betting that turn, getting some value and it's up to 280,000 in chips while Barre unfortunately is down to 42,000. But that's still not the end of the world despite starting with 100,000 considering it's 42 big lines. One of the technicians at Shared Hands just came by and they deserve a shout out as well. Been doing a fantastic job all week. You've probably seen their streams at many other prestigious poker events around the world, including at WPTs and more recently at Triton Poker. Easily the most robust and professional TV table crew I've worked in in my life. It's been a pleasure to get to know some of those guys. One or two I have known before as uh, friends outside of the production arena. But they make my life very easy. And I hope I'm not causing them too many problems either. But it's Jacobson, Tom Jacobson, raising his suited 10-9. And Bill Stad now on the button, three betting with a weak hand, 10 6 suited. Perhaps just saw what Christian got away with with a 6 5 offsuit. But is dominated by Jacobson's 10 9 if Jacobson wants to play this hand out of position. And does call, it looks like.
Christian just making some change for Oscar there. That was the short delay, so there would be the right amount in the pot. And neither player getting too much love from the Ace of Spade, four diamonds, jack of clubs, flop, both having backdoors to the same Broadway and to the backdoors to the flush draw. But after Jacobson checks, Bill said it's going to try to keep up with this story. He did three bet with this 10 6 suited. Does have a lot of aces in his three bet range. 3,500. And bets just 3,500, about one quarter of the pot. But being that Jacobson doesn't have much at all, may get the job done, but also may want to see what comes on the turn. Not this time. Not good enough of a flop for him. And Oscar Bilsad, one of the stronger players from Norway, is getting closer back to that starting stack. If you like playing against aggressive players, then you would love playing with the Norwegians. However, they could be very difficult. They're very intelligently aggressive, and aggressive poker is typically good poker. I was chatting with the Norwegian commentators, Stieg and Chell, and just going through how much the Norwegian players have improved over the years, because they've been commentating the Norwegian championship for so many years. And it's gone from a reckless hyper aggression to a very controlled and smart aggression, such as what we've seen thus far in the main event. And Spite opening the button for 2600 with the Jack 10 suited. Gold quickly getting out of the way. And I don't think we'll see Bari defending a 40 big blind stack with 7 4 offsuit, but I, he's not immediately tossing them away. There are many players that like to defend with any two to a single raise. And it seems like Bari is one of them, at least to a button open. Fortunately for him, his cards are still in, but it's a four out of the window, along with two threes. And Bari improving to two pair. The does go check, check. And Bari checking again on that ace of clubs turn. Now is Spike going to rep that he has an ace? He does have a lot of aces in his range, considering he opened up the pot, so it does try to take it away with a bet of 2,500. But Bari, after connecting with his four, will at least see what the river card may bring. And the four clubs on the river, so Bari improving to a full house. Is he going to try to bet it out? He's not going to get any value if he bets, I don't believe. But he doesn't know that. If he bets, he could set the price for a player that may have had that ace in their hand. So I could see him deciding either way here. The only two hands that would be beating him would be pocket aces for a better full house or pocket threes for quads. He does have the pocket fours blocked with his own full house fours over threes. A very fortuitous board when it's double paired and you have seven four and one of those pairs are fours and it's even the top pair does bet big and for spite only the board plays so he's not going to try to steal this one away and it wouldn't have worked out well if he did so Bari wins the pot and it's up to 47,000 in chips it looks like we have a new player coming to the table. So blinds are up. This time with 1,000. And the dealer just announced that blinds have gone up to 600, 1,200. So that hour went by so fast because it's hour long blind levels. I can't believe the blinds went up already. Perhaps since the poker action has been very entertaining with some aggressive pre flop play and interesting post-flop strategies.
<laughs> and our new player is Forberg. And Spite with the Ace King. We've seen him, his raising size a little bit bigger than the other players at the table, so I don't expect it to be a tiny raise. And indeed, it's not. It's a 3x from the cutoff, the 3,600. And it folds around to Magnus Carlsen in the big line. He would maybe call a small raise, but not one of this magnitude. And Spite picking up the blinds and the ante, adding 3,000 chips to his stack. And Forberg must have just entered the event. Players can still late enter until the start of day two, but it is a freeze out affair, so if players lose their initial 100,000 chip stack, they cannot get back in. Old school poker, I love it. I wish there were more pure freeze out events around the world. <coughs> the problem is, it's getting more and more expensive to run poker events, so you're gonna see more and more re entries in order to make up for some of those costs. But the Norwegian Championship is remaining as a freeze out, keeping its integrity. You can't eliminate the best player and expect them to get back in, at least into this event. And despite just limping from uh, the hijack, let's see if Carlson raises or just completes with his ace four suited. I do not expect to see him folding anyway. And is raising to 5,000. Maybe picking up the blinds and ante along with an additional bet. But no, Spite is not being tight this time around. Does call, he is in position. And meanwhile, Spite is likely to go nowhere. His ace and eight didn't connect, but it's an all diamond 10 3 king flop, and he has that nut diamond with the ace of diamonds for the nut flush draw. Let's see if Carlson will continue bet after raising up to 5,000 free flop from the small bind. Indeed he does, but it looks like for 6,000. I think the only question is if Spike calls or raises, but it, he quickly calls, so that answers our question. And the nine of diamonds on the turn, so now Spike with the nuts. An ace high flush for Spike, no flush at all for Carlson. No chance to improve on the river as well, and no chance to really steal this away, but he doesn't know that, so we may see him try to. He slows down with the check after Spike called his flop bet. And Spite is going to attempt some value. I do not think it's going to work this time around with a bet of 7,000. Magnus Carlsen quickly folds and Spite takes a pot off the poker Grandmaster and is up to 78,000. He would have liked to have seen himself get a little bit more chips, maybe even double up there, but that wasn't gonna happen with Carlsen not connecting at all on that board.
and it does look like chess isn't the only game Carlson is very good at. But it's very interesting, this event. We have Magnus Carlsen, perhaps the best chess player in the world, or at least I consider him to be the best chess player in the world currently. And Espen Ullen Norstad, another Norwegian, he won the 2022 WSOP main event. That doesn't mean he's the best player in the world, of course, but Espen has been on top of the game for so many years as both a cash game player and a tournament player that he is among the best. So among the many thousand uh, recreational players that we have at the Norwegian Championship, we do have some formidable players as well. It's a very nice mix and everybody, regardless of their skill level, is here to have a good time. Both opening up for a min raise with the king queen. And Forberg, who's our new player, opts to complete and uh, opts to uh, call the bet from the big blind. This is not the flop either player would have really liked to see. Neither player with spades on the seven deuce deuce spot. And Forberg repping, he has something, fires out a donk bet, gets fold to fold the better hand. So we're learning a little bit about Forberg here. Recognize that he had a chance to steal this one away right away. Gets the job done. Keeping his poker face on though. Actually, I believe fold that one that hand and the hand before. Carlson with the ace eight from the cutoff in an unopened pot is reaching for his chips. Raising it up to a little more than a mid race for 2700. Tom Jacobson doesn't look like he's going anywhere from the button. This may be a three bet, but it looks like a call. It does indeed call from the button. Forbick holding his suited ace from the small blind. And Onsen who showed earlier he liked to defend his hands and occasionally three bet in position is out of position his this time in the big blind. I'm not surprised he's reaching for chips though. And does call to bring to the pot to nearly 10,000 in chips. Carlson still ahead after the Jack Deuce Jack Rainbow flop, but no player connected on that flop. Carlson opting to check rather than continue. And Jacobson checking as well and improving to two pair on that Queen of Spades turn is currently far ahead. Let's see if Carlson's going to rep that he has a queen. Not this time. And Jacobson is going to try to get some value here with a bet, I believe, of 6,100. And it is Olmson quickly folds and I expect Carlson after checking both the flop and turn will fold as well and indeed he does but still a nice little pick up there by Tom Jacobson
Balls around to Barre with the ace three suited. Not this time for Barre. Carlson folding his nine eight off. Jacobson tossing away his rags and Forberg, the relatively new player at the table that just entered the event not so long ago. With the suited king six from the button. Seven. Opens for 2700 and I don't expect Onsen to go anywhere with the sixes. It's just a question whether he's going to three bet or call. Does call. And Bill said with the Brunson folds his Brunson. Huh? <coughs> so Onsen pretty far ahead already with the sixes. Might be hard for him to know where he's at because the chances of him getting a set with Forberg having a six in his hand is very small and Forberg can rep these aces being that he's the player that opened. But perhaps Watson can also represent that considering it does look very strong when you're calling from the small bond. But I expect Forberg to continue on this swap despite not connecting. So you're not just playing your cards, you're playing your range, you're playing your position. That's 2600 and Onsen going nowhere. Not afraid that there are three over cards to his sixes on the flop. Perhaps with a plan in mind on the later streets. Nobody getting any love from the four diamond turn, but it's Onsen reaching for chips, and this might work. I mean, he is ahead already. But Forberg likely doesn't realize he's ahead at this point. I mean, Onsen doesn't realize he's ahead. And Onsen takes it down, and it keeps winning these small and medium sized pots to continue to grow his stack. <laughs> he did come to the table with more than 200,000 in chips <laughs> and now has nearly 300,000 in chips. <laughs> A few early and mid position folds. Expect Warburg to fold his ten four, even though it's an unopened pot. Onsen, though, has shown that he can play any two from the button, so maybe he will decide to play position again. And we'll be opening up with a bet to 3,200 from the button. Gets Billstad to fold this 10-9, but I don't think he's going to get Spite to fold his 7s. Spite will either call or raise here. He does just defend his big blind. Spite checks the king 5 3 flop with two diamonds. Onsen has back door flush draw with his diamonds, but that's not what he's trying to represent at the moment. Bets 3,000, continuing to the post-flop aggression that we've seen from him throughout the past blind level and a half. Spite <coughs> is still ahead, makes the call.
Ace of Hearts falls on the turn, so now Onsen has a wheel draw, but he's going to try to wrap either the Ace or King if he does bet, but checks it back, and the Ace of Clubs on the river. Spite has showdown value, but he is looking to do something here. Betting out for 6,500. The thing with this bet is you're not going to get worse hands to call. You're not going to get better hands to fold. He is setting the price, I guess, that he's willing to pay. And that was the only thing that this kind of bet will accomplish. But Onsen quickly folds, and regardless of what we think, Spite did pick up the pot. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Here's a look at the chip counts. Only half the players at the table have more than a starting stack. It's only Barre who has less than half of a starting stack. There's a bit of a gap between Hans Krinshaw, Onsen, and the rest of the field at this table. There are likely some bigger stacks at some of the outer tables. But I don't expect that there's a half a million chip stack in play yet, so it could be that Hans Christian is in the lead. Whoever has the lead, it's not that relevant early on in an event. This is a five-day event. It's the second of two opening fights. You can see the field continues to grow, and day 1B already up to 662 players. And I can use the word players and not entries, which is so rare these days in any event. But there's no re-entries allowed. And even if a player busted out of day 1A, they are not part of this day 1B field. They're not allowed to be. But Onsen keeping his foot on the gas, opening to 2600 from the cutoff with the Queen-10 offsuit. Spike calling with his uh, A5 suited from the small blind. Let's see if Volt uh, opts to defend his big blind with the king eight. Is technically ahead with the king high thus far, but he's likely putting Onsen on something else and perhaps fight as well. And as I say that, I guess he is not because he's three betting to 9,000. Love the heart here by Volt. Even though Onsen has some chips to spare, I would expect him to be folding his queen 10 off. Does give a, a look over to Vold after folding. And Spite, who would be playing this hand out of position, folds as well. So nice read there by Vold to gain some chips. 5,200 and free chips. Mm -hmm. Without needing to even see a flop. Action folds all the way around to bold in the small blind. We've seen some aggression at this table pre flop, but not this particular hand. At least not as of yet. It does raise to 3,500. Mari with the 10 3 off decides not to get cute even in position, and folds winning back to back pots without seeing a flop.
I really hope we're able to keep this table after the break, but I think they're trying to mix things up, so we will see. But we still have some poker action, so let's enjoy it. At least 30 more minutes with this table. And the newcomer, Forberg, raising it up to 2,700 from early position with ace-jack, fairly standard. But Bari waking up with the aces. Let's see how he opts to play this. Is he going to play it slow? Is he going to play it fast? We know he's going to play it. This could be the spot he's looking for to double his stack. He may find it hard to do so, though. I don't think he's going to slow play. I think he's thinking about how much to raise to. And raises it big to 10,000. Well, it's big, he is out of position, and that would be about the sizing he would use if he was three betting light. We know he's not light. Forberg recognizes that Barre likely has his ace jack beat, even though he would have been playing that hand, the position does fold. <coughs> Barre is having a hard time to hide his disappointment there. <coughs> how much noise these microphones pick up. Even can hear players coughing or breathing heavy. We get all different kinds of camera angles. Stad from middle position opening to 2500, a little more than a min raise with just 10 7 suited. But so far, so good for Oscar. Magnus Carlson folds, and let's see if Tom Jacobson wants to defend. Nobody wants to play along, and uh, Bill Stad picks up another pot, pre pop. He's picked up a couple of them now. I'm just going to go from your side. I think it's a little cold. That's this that I told you to do. Fancy happening yet? Nobody really turning up with much of anything though either. What did the state mall? But Barre with his okay. 97 offsuit is thinking about whether he wants to get involved here. A little more than a min raise by Barre. I expect Jacobson to at least defend here. It is suited. It is yeah, a king deuce. Like but he was in the small bind now. So I don't blame the fold. And Barre snagging some chips up to 52,000. I'm on in for those of you that have never been to the venue here at Card Casino, it's definitely one of the biggest casinos in Europe. 
especially as it comes to poker. We have at least a couple hundred tables between three floors, and there's even another floor where there's no poker tables. The top floor where this feature table is taking place also features a buffet that is open most hours of the day and evening. It does not close until 3 a.m. in fact. There's plenty of other food options as well, but the buffet is delicious. It is free for all players to enter once per day, and only 10 euros if players want to go back for a second helping at another time in the day, but it's all you can eat during your entry, so typically players are filling up. I did see some players enjoying some nice toasty sandwiches during the last break. There's also some higher end options available as well. Pulls around to Magnus Carlsen in the hijack with ace eight and does not want to play the ace eight. It looks like Magnus has studied some poker. And Jacobson with the king jack from the cutoff, it looks like he has different thoughts. It looks like a raise to 3,000. And it is. So far, so good. Let's see what Billstat does with the Queen 10. We've seen him with a few different gears, sometimes three betting from even the blinds. It looks like in this case, he's happy to defend his big blind. And both players snagging a piece of the seven of spades, ten of hearts, king of diamonds flop. Jacobson in the lead with top pair. He was the aggressor. Billstead checked. Jacobson bet 5,000 into a pot of 7,800. Now is Billstead going to peel his middle pair? Is he maybe going to raise his middle pair or is he going to fold? Those are obviously the only three options for Oscar. Taking his time and deciding what his course of action is and does fold the middle pair wisely, recognizing that Jacobson had him beat and indeed he did this time around. Nice read there by Billstead. really enjoying this poker action and I'm really impressed with the awareness of Magnus Carlsen in particular being that ch chess is what he spends the majority of his time on but he seemed to have studied up quite well with poker as well does not appear to be a new player at all and rather comes across as a very experienced player and Onsen, who's been quiet as of late after being quite active earlier, raising the button with the queen jack and tight, and spite not being so tight, and calling with the 10 8 offsuit. Both players check the 3 3 ace flop, and now another 3 on the turn. Onsen is ahead with this queen kicker, and even a small bet will likely get the job done. A snap fold there by tight. Spite, he was tight post-flop, even if he was not tight pre-flop. And I think I got myself caught in a tongue twister. Spite is tight, spite is not tight. Maybe spite is right. Can also work in this situation. 
What I do not want to say is good night, Spite, because that will mean he is out of chips. And it's fun watching him play as well. Holds around to Carlson with the queen nine, gets rid of that. The seven three by Jacobson is likely to fall from under the gun plus two. Warburg not, not wanting to have anything to do with this five four off, but if things may be different from Onsen with the seven five suited, it, I heard the sound of chips hit there. It looks like just a limp though. Is Billstad going to do anything fancy on the button? All he has is jack six suited. Both him and Onsen do have hearts. Not this time for Billstad. However, Spite is completing from the small bind with King 10 and full checking his option with the 10 8. Not much love for any player on the two hard to a spades, jack of spades flop. Nobody directly connecting with it. Some back doors for all the players, that's about it. And Onsen continuing the story, it's going to be hard for any of the players to call. And Onsen picking up yet another pot. A bunch of pulls here. Ooh. And putting by Oscar Billstad with the King 4 offsuit from the cutoff. Spite holding the button with Jack of Diamond Sonic Clubs. But Bold is not going to be folding from the small bind. He'll either be completing or raising. It looks like he's <laughs> reaching for a raise. And a race for three big binds. And Bari waking up with the sixes. Only has half a stack left. Does have that A6 dominated. But if he does just call, it's going to be hard for him to realize it. He does just call. And the, one of the reasons is it's very unlikely for him to hit a set, being that Volt has a six in his hand too. And what a flop for Volt. Although he doesn't directly connect, he has now the nut flush draw, some back doors to the straight. And will be continuing out of position. We're 2700. And Bari with less than a start half less than half a starting stack in his hand. Does indeed call. You could see the equities are very close. And the seven of clubs on the turn may slow down the action at least for Volt. Especially after Bari called the pre-flop raise and then the bet on the flop. I don't expect them to fold if Bari makes a reasonably sized bet. And I expect Bari to be checking back a lot of the time here too, but he might think differently. It's okay if he bets, especially after his opponent checks. But it wasn't a big bet, only 3,500. Making it easy for Bull to call or even check raise. 
Does just call more than 20,000 in the pot. Will it be a heart on the river? It is not as the king of spades. Wari is still ahead, but if Bold fires out of bluff, then potentially can steal it away. But both players check it down, and Bari snags some much needed chips up to 62,000. chatting here, but he has sevens in his hand. And min raises from early position with his sevens. That's a call by Spite from the cutoff with ace 10. Let's see if Carlson defends his rags here. It's, you know, he has to put another big blind in. I don't blame him for folding. We talked about this earlier that some players will like to peel any two. However, it could put you in weird spots post flop. So I do like the discipline fold there by Magnus. It looks like a little confusion going on over there. The dealers and floor have been working tremendous hours with all the Norwegians in town here this week. So Forberg still ahead with the sevens on the nine diamonds. Who is spades five of club swap? Only one scare card above his sevens. And will continue for 2600. And Spite wasting no time to call. He does have two overcards. You may think he's actually ahead with this ace 10. Or may just want to see how this plays out and knowing he's in position. Now, the Queen of Diamonds isn't one of the cards that Forbrook really wanted to see with the sevens. Optimally went the mind at a seven or a nine. And the eight of spades on the river. So four brick sevens are still good. Let's see what's let's see what he does. If he checks, is Spike gonna check back with potentially some showdown value? It doesn't look like Forberg is checking though. He will be betting. <laughs> I'm not sure if this is a value bet or if he's trying to uh, bluff his opponent, but if it was called, it would be a value bet technically. So Forberg picking up a pot, getting back near what he began the day with. He did late enter and immediately was sat at the feature table. So imagine that you're coming level <laughs> five, level six into the main event, day one B. It is a free set affair. There's close to 700 players playing today. Oh, go upstairs to the feature table. And you'll be playing with Magnus Carlsen, by the way. Warburg just winning a hand with sevens and now has nines. This is a hand that's playable from any position, including under the gun. Expect to see him open once again. A min raise once again by Warburg. He min raised just a hand ago with the sevens and perhaps this min race will save him some chips because Billstead waking up with the monster with the queens 
I do not expect to see him just call here. He is in middle position. I think he's just thinking about how much to three bet, or maybe has a number in mind. And raises it to six big blinds. <laughs> and Vold here with the ace queen. Now, if we didn't see Bill set three bet, perhaps we would see Vold do it. Well, it's looking down, and he is in the cutoff. And does fold. I would say the two options there would be to uh, four bet or to fold. The folding is a safer one. And oh my god, we could see some fireworks here. Magnus Carlsen with the ace king suited. Now I do expect to see a four bet. Carlson trying to keep his poker face on, and it does appear he has a very good poker face in, in addition to being one of the best, if not the best, chess player in the world. And four betting it to 20. That will get Forberg to quickly fold his nines. Very disciplined, didn't even need to think about it, understanding that he was behind one of those players. However, I don't expect Bilstad to fold his hand. I expect either him to peel, but optimally five bet, perhaps with a shove based on the stack depths. He's certainly not gonna fold. And if stacks were shallower, then I would certainly expect stacks to be in, but perhaps because of how deep players are, we will see some post bop play. Stead is a very experienced player. Let's see how he approaches this spot against the chess legend Magnus Carlsen facing a four bet. We haven't seen Carlsen at all get out of line in the nearly two hours that he's been at the feature table. So perhaps these are things going through Bill Set's head. The two actually likely played at the outer table together before hitting the feature table on the break. But I do like he's at least thinking everything through. You do not need to rush your decisions in live poker. His time bank would have ran out on line though. It does just call. So very interesting here. We'll be playing in position with this Queens. And it is a pretty good flop for the Queens with the two of diamonds, three of club, jack of spades. Carlson would have liked to see something better. Let's see if Carlson fires out a continuation bet anyway. It does look like he is thinking about it. The gears are in motion. And he's reaching for some chips. But it wasn't a very large bet, I don't believe. It's 7,000 into a pot of 44,800. Perhaps doing that to make sure he's getting his price on the flop, hoping for something else on the Turner River, or just to see where he's at. But I don't think he's going to get much information if Billstad just calls, but I don't think Billstad should just call. So let's see what Oscar does here. That does look like indeed a call. So Carlson setting the price. Billstad just calling. And Carlson improving to top pair on the King of Clubs turn. Billstead by not five bet jamming pre-flop, by not raising that flop. Although if he raised it big, he probably would have gone across another way. Perhaps we'll save himself some chips. And Carlson, despite improving the top pair, does check this time around. Billstead, although it's just one overcard, that King of Clubs does kind of hit Carlson's range 
of poor betting. There's a lot of ace kings like he has in that range. There's also kings and aces. I wouldn't put Carlson poor betting light, at least at this point in time, based on what we've seen from him thus far in the event. And the five of spades, complete support on the river. Carlson with the check mark in an amazing spot to gain some chips. It's already almost 60,000 in the pot. After it went check, check on the turn, I think we'll see Carlson try to get a little more value from the river. And bets one third of the pot, give or take, with a bet of 18,000. This may string Bill Stad along, although he shouldn't be confident that his hand is good. He knows he has very strong showdown value. It's good, once again, that we see Billstead thinking things over rather than rushing his decisions like we see many players do in live poker and online poker you're forced to make fast decisions and live poker you can take your time usually have at least two three minutes before a player will call a cock especially on a river bet so you should take your time go back through the hand go back through your opponent and then make your decision Perhaps even try to get a read off your opponent, but that's going to be hard with Magnus Carlsen. It does call, only to get the bad news that he was ahead until the turn. Magnus Carlsen picking up the pot and is up to 159,000 in chips. Meanwhile, Oscar Bilstad has seen his opening stack of 100,000 dwindle to just 41,000. Still some hope. We have a break approaching soon, but regardless of Billstat losing some chips, still has some playability. And here's a look at the chip counts. Magnus Carlsen now with the third biggest stack at the table, but it's Hans Christian Onsen, the most aggressive player at the table thus far. With the biggest stack of 27,000, uh, 279,400 in chips. <laughs> Although we haven't seen the clock just based on the timing of things, I believe we have two or three hands left in this fine level before we will go on our final break of the day. The structure on both opening days is eight levels of one hour each with a 15 minute break after every two blind levels. But rest assured, after we're done broadcasting this, we have the heads up finals. Unfortunately, we will not be seeing 2022 WSOP World Champion Espen Uden Jorstad competing after he was handily defeated by Seaman van Branson last night in the semifinals. And he will be facing off against Oystein Brendan for the title. Looking forward to that as well. So a limp by Bill Stad from early position with 8-7 suited fold, trying to punish the limper with a raise if the queen jack off. Does get other players to fold out of the hand. Bill Stad is getting a decent price to call. But it's interesting to see now that Bill Stad has lost some chips. He has adopted a limping strategy a la Dominic Nietzsche who is the most famous player to profitably use a limping strategy at certain stack depths. Not gonna pretend I understand why he does it or how it works, as I do not have a limping strategy in my game. I can potentially sometimes limp behind with pocket pairs, but that's the extent of it, or with pseudo connector kind of things. 
but I will never be the one to open one. But meanwhile, both players now looking down at a pretty board. Bilstad is ahead with third pair with the open ender, but Bolt has a better open ender and both of his overcards are live and he will be the one reaching for chips. And although Bilstad is down to 37,000, once he bump calls and gets this kind of board, don't expect him to go anywhere. He may even check raise here. It does look like he will be just calling. Eighteen thousand four hundred in the pot with one card to come. And the eight of clubs on the river gives Billsa two pair, but more importantly it gives Bull the nuts. The eight, nine, ten Jack Queen. Technically, he should be betting big, not because his opponent might have two pair, but his opponent may have the jack and would have to call. The jack would also be a straight, but a lower one. And it's hard to put a player on jack queen. So we know Volt will be betting the nuts. It's a question of how much. I would love to see a big sizing, even though it likely won't work against Billstead. It was 11,000 into 18.4. It is big, but I would have liked to have seen it a little bit bigger, but maybe in this circumstance with Bill said having two pair, he'll feel compelled to call, where if it was a bigger bet, he would maybe get out of the way. But does read the situation that there's just too much out there. Obviously, it wasn't the nuts on the board because there were three clubs as well. So missing the fact that there were three clubs, I actually do like Bold's bet sizing especially after it was checked over to him. <laughs> Players are having a good time. Not only on all the outer tables, you can hear the buzz, but at the feature table as well, in between hands. It is nice to see some laughs, some smiles, some short <laughs> conversations. But during the hands, it's all business, showing respect for the players that are actually playing the hands. And Bare, who's been quiet as of late, will not play his king six offsuit. And who can blame him? Well, we may see Jacobson open the button. We do not with this queen three suited. And maybe we see a walk here. It is only Jack Deuce against the player that has the most chips at the table. Hans Christian has shown that he's a very strong player. But Onsen only has seven five. Gets the walk, is he gonna show it? It does look like he showed. I think uh, well, this one and I didn't get the last one. Yeah. This is his. That's one and it looks like we have our first yeah. feature yeah. table in days at the feature table. It does happen. It's very easy to happen. The important thing is when there is a missed deal, they're quickly 
pick up the cards and get things going again, which is what's happening right here. It's not that uncommon for misdeals to happen at any poker event, even the World Series poker main event, you see misdeals left and right. Even at the feature table with the most experienced dealers there. Even at Triton Poker, which shared hands uh, also works. The binds are nosebleed. Even at a six figure bind tournament, it can happen. We're all human. And despite, once again, not being that tight, opening to 3,000. And Bolt looked like he already folded his five of hearts slash mystery card. But Barre now with the tens. If he had that stack that he had before, which was like in the 30,000 range, it could even be a, a jam at that point. But this is either a raise or a call. Does just call respecting the fact that Spite was under the gun. And you can hear that after this hand, there will be the final break of 20 minutes. You can see some of the players getting off from the table. Billstad, though, may decide to make a move here with this ace jack suit, and indeed he does. He jams. We could see some fireworks in this last hand before the break. I expect, despite the fold, Bari's going to get a chip count. I imagine we're going to see him call with the tens, and Billstad may not come back from break or may come back with break with double the stack he currently has. While Bari, if he calls, and doesn't hold with his tens. When I say hold, it's still a flip, but you can see he's a 40, 54% favorite and doesn't need to improve from the board. He just needs Billstad not to improve on the board and does make the call. So we have a coin flip and Billstad is at risk. Billstad is still all smiles. Maybe I think he asked if we can run it twice. I'm not going to pretend I understand Norwegian, but I think that was what he said. And so far, Bari's tens are ahead on the seven diamond, three of spades, six of club flop. The jack of spades on the turn puts Billstad ahead, and he just needs to sweat a ten. One of the two tens here in the deck to double a stack. And the queen of clubs on the river gives Billstad the double up. But meanwhile, Bari will be coming back with just 30,000 in chips. Once Billstad shoved, that hand played itself for Bari. Perhaps Bari should have three bet, but I think it would have worked out the same. Yeah. So well done there, Oscar Billstad. I can't blame Bari at all. And now players are on a 20 minute break, so we will be right back as well. Thank you very much for tuning in. This is Jason Glatzer live at the Norwegian Championship, day 1B of the main event. We will be back soon. So I could just turn this down if I want to. Like which one is it? Hello. Hello. Yeah, you can. Like that with volume, and then I see where it is. Yeah, and you can see actually when it's speaking, it's like it was a it's good. Tar sig et syn, og da må jo Magnus Carlsen synes det knekker tis ut i sin position. Har ikke nok Jakobsen som prøver til at bag sig i første position efter flot, men nu prøver jo Carlsen action her.
Det er et veldig viktig poeng at om han syner nå, så er det ingen som kan gå over en gang til. Se her! Er det kjærske familiepott i trebettet? Pott før flopp. 35.500 i midten. Tror du jeg kommer til å like dette tempoet her? Det virker veldig lovende flåten. Her kommer floppen. Og det er tre spar, og det er Jakobsen som har spar. Kongan er eneste som har spar på hånd. Men det er dame der for både Vold og Bilstad. Det er også et S der for Jakobsen. Topp par med topp kicker. Karlsen har hulldrag til strit, men det tror jeg ikke kommer til å spilles til bunn, så frem til de ikke sjekker seg dit. Karlsen tjekker etter at både Aurensen, Birstad og Vold har tjekket først. Her er det Jakobsen da, som hadde dette trebettet som gjorde at han fikk med seg i samtlige. Nå kan jo det ha vist seg å være en genistrek. Byr av 13 000. Aurensen er borte med firerne sine. Birstad kaster. Det samme gjør Vold. Magnus Karlsen, han slipper, så dette her fungerte jo optimalt for Jakobsen denne gang, vel å merke. Vel å merke, ja. Kommer seg opp på over startsak igjen, da så jeg at han var litt ned etter de første fire timene. Nå er han over, og det føles alltid godt. Det er fint det å komme seg på pluss siden. Da kan man se. Og som vi ser, Tveit har vel minst sjetonger, hvis jeg ikke husker feil, av de åtte vi har. Han spiller på rundt 33 000 et eller annet sted. Jeg så det på grafikken også. Og kaster knekk 9. Her har vi Mohamed Barre. Går som regel bare under navnet Barre. Han har S8 til sut. Det er pluss 2. Når han åpner her, så er vel det en hånd som skal åpnes til G pluss 2, vil jeg tro. Karlsen har S10 seg ut. Hver gang jeg ser Magnus Karlsen, synes jeg han har en ny sveis. Men det er vel kanskje litt sånn etter hvordan han har sovet natten i forveien. Ja, så tror jeg det er litt den samme sveisen som utvikler seg, for det er en stund siden han har vært hos frisøren nå. Det tror jeg må være lov å si. Ja, eller kanskje det er en ny stil som du og jeg aldri vil kunne oppnå. Ja, det er helt riktig i hvert fall. Den tiden er forbi. Tre vett fra Karlsen. Tilbake til Mohamed Barre. Han syner. Han sitter ute av posisjonen etter flopp. Han potensielt flott og godt. Mavon dør vi se at han er også litt ned. Han har 62 000 bak her, men ingen grunn til panikk. Det er 62 ganger i Storblind. 360 i flott. Bare har allerede sjekket. Jeg tror faktisk Mohamed er fornavnet til Barre, men han heter jo Mohamed Barre, så det ender jo det at med tre navn så blir rekkefølgen litt rar, det har vi jo sett tidligere også. Se her, se på C-bettet til Karlsen, 2500, inn i 15005. Bare syner. Tor på tørn. Karlsen tjekker bak. Og det tenner og river. Og det betyr at kicker spiller som Magnus Karlsen er best. Kan ikke tape den hvis... Ja, hvis ikke bare får han til å kaste seg. Det er vanskelig å representere noe på det bordet her, sånn som hånda har blitt spilt. Ja... Det er par på hånda. Nei, bare han sjekker. Han kan jo treffe den femmeren selvfølgelig, men jeg tror vel S8 har nok showdown-value til å 
skuffet det med ro, og han vil jo bli skuffet. Ja, da får Carlsen sjekke bak mer showdown value. Og er oppe på 136 000. Og han må bare spille på 60 000. Med blinde på 501 000, så er de altså 60 ganger store blinde. Jeg elsker dette nivået. Det er vakt. Bare snakke først. Se ned på S-kongen. Tusen to hundre. Karlsen kaster. Jakobsen med dame syv suit. Han er borte. Grøtan tipper at han kommer til å kaste også. Det er alltid litt skummelt når noen åpner fra UTG fullring. Kristian Ervensen har S2. Han har veldig mye sjetonger. Han tar seg et syn. Det han håper kommer til å være i posisjon etter flopp. Og det blir det i og med at Bilstad kaster. Tveit har dameknekt suit i Lillebrin. Overcall fra Tveit. Ja, det var ikke suit. Det var off-suit. Og Eivind Wolle kaster. Treveis til flopp. Knekt 10-7. Tveit som treffer topppar. Bulldrag for Barre i tillegg til to overkort til floppen. Jævnsen har spar-esse. Tveit har sjekket. Det er bare sin tur. Han sjekker nok for pottkontroll. Og her kommer chipleader Evensen. Tveit har. Dyr 5000. Tveit med toppare. Han syner. Bare tenker å... Ok, begge to har nå. Jeg vet jeg har alt til nøtt, så to overkort, men her ser du disiplin. Ja, og han har jo nesten halve stekken tapt allerede. Det påvirker nok også litt av navelsen. Men så er det også det at han kan dra dødt til alt utenom det hulldraget som han har. Med tanke på hvordan de to andre spiller. Her spiller jo Tveit denne her beinhardt også, og Evensen han plukker opp flørsen.